Much family shit. Hey guys, as promised, we're here with Christian Brune from Snowpiercer season three and also Ready or Not, which we have previously covered on the pod. He's agreed to answer a couple questions for us about his experience with Ready or Not, go through the segments, which we know everybody wants to hear from him. And then we've also got a couple general spooky questions. Um, And I would like to start with a general spooky question if you're ready, Christian. I'm ready. Fire away. (laughs) Yeah, so if you listen to the episode, you know that we just like tagged Christian and everything on social, and he was so kind and benevolent about it, um, and then we asked him to be on the podcast, and he said, yeah, um, but we went back and forth a little. Um, we had you on the schedule initially for a different movie. You were mm-hmm. going to do 47 Meters Down Uncaged, which is so funny to me as a concept. Did you ever watch that movie? Never watched it. I, oh. I still haven't watched it. I really want to but also it scares the shit out of me um I love swimming I'm a water Mm -hmm. sign I love the ocean I'm more of a freshwater lake person because there's not anything that's going to kill me in there unless you watch Placid but other than that yeah alligators very scary um but like sharks scare the shit out of me they legitimately scare the shit out of me and I've snorkeled with sharks before and 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 been in the ocean with them before but I'm so brave (laughs) Well, I can assure you that a marine biologist reached out to us on Instagram and she really appreciated our conversation about how those sharks couldn't exist. So you can watch the movie totally free of fear. And should you ever want to watch the movie? Great. Now you're going to say the Meg isn't a real thing. Like a Megalodon (laughs) is not a real shark. I know that everyone lives in fear of a shark tornado, but you know, sometimes we get to have our little flights of fancy. Um, I also really thought that Sydney was going to take that opportunity though, after you mentioned that you're a water sign to ask you about your astrology. I know. Which water sign? I'm a dirty Scorpio. Me too! So she! Aww. Look at you guys. Little Scorpio dance. Nobody likes us. Nobody Nobody likes us. And we love it. We love it. I like yeah, exactly. A lot. I, I like get a lot of like a lot of this from people when I tell them I'm a Scorpio. That's because you're also a man, so everybody <laughs> always hates on Scorpio. Man. <laughs> it's rough out here. It's rough out here. <laughs> well, in a two episodes ago, Sydney told me that I have like a Sagittarius rising, and apparently that means I look like a horse. So she's no holds barred when it comes to this shit. That like, is absolutely wrecked savage. my savage. Savage. <laughs> I'll yeah. never recover. <laughs> no. So we loved you and ready or not. We've already said that. It's true. But do you know how to use a crossbow now? Um I am trained mm-hmm. on crossbows. Um no, I can't even fake it. No, I don't know how to use a crossbow. <laughs> I, I really believe it. <laughs> I have shot a bow and arrow before in camp, and then also a couple of years ago. I took a Zen archery mm-hmm. class, just one class <laughs> with a friend of mine in Pasadena. That was really a fun. Zen archery. Pasadena, shout yeah. out. Little That's shout out to Pasadena. <laughs> Seriously. Wow. Yeah. So he's not going to let that go. <laughs> a friend of mine um, got me a lesson with a Zen archery master in Pasadena. Wow. And we went to like a park and shot. There's like a park where you can shoot arrows in Pasadena. And it was so much fun, but crossbow, no. Although I did do one interview where uh, the person interviewing me, we went to a stage combat uh, sort of dojo in in the valley in LA and uh, <laughs> in the valley. And um, we were armed with mini crossbow guns, like mini crossbow pistols. And we had like a little like shooting darts thing in the interview. And then they let me keep it at the end of I somewhere in LA right now in a storage unit, sadly, because I'm between apartments uh, um, is 
this <laughs> crossbow. Like I'm just waiting for my storage unit to end up on storage wars and people open it up mm-hmm. and just be like, what the hell Why is in is- here? Look up, look up it. Christian Brune's storage yeah. unit laden with weapons. <laughs> so many weapons. Uh, oh my God. Okay. The drama. Yeah. I have a question. Please. What are your thoughts on fake blood? Where do you stand on fake blood? You can make fake blood at home and it's delicious. <gasps> Tell me the recipe. <laughs> I remember in theater school, when I was in theater school after university, um, uh, we took a stage combat course and we had to learn how to make our own stage blood, uh, fake blood. And it was like like Nesquik chocolate syrup and food coloring. It was basically all you really needed to make like a pretty convincing um fake blood and it was delicious so and i use that's that to like make a, a red velvet one. cake Ooh. <laughs> there you go Fun fact. i mean boom right there it's basically red velvet before the flower um oh my god but we had a lot of blood on the set of ready or not we had bags of goop and blood that would explode all over us um Yum. and then would be like they would do some visual effects where um when we spoiler alert blow up at the end mm-hmm. <laughs> um they would like film our reaction right up into the like uh, and then uh we would you know they would cut and then they'd move in a bag of like goop of viscera of like chunks and blood and chunks. just like bits and bobs and potpourri and then just explode the bag with like some sort of a charge that would just spray it everywhere um spray us with there was goop guns and stuff like that Ooh, I like love we, that phrase yeah goop, goop guns, guns. <laughs> so sexy um <laughs> there was just the budget on fake blood was huge and there would be days yeah. when we would be covered in blood in our like tuxedos and we'd be sitting on cast chairs in the next room waiting to film but we would just be like so saturated in blood that we they put plastic down. So we'd all just be sitting there. We couldn't be on our phones. So we had to like actually talk to each other. Oh, and we would awful. just be sitting there like holding our hands out because they were so sticky and just like laughing and joking with each other and just sitting around in a circle, like the whole cast covered in blood. It was so much fun. I mean, That's it sounds kind of annoying, but it's so much fun. We have a lot it of fun pictures from, incredible. from that. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's awesome. That's it's like playing in the mud all day for your job. It's great. Yeah. That Do you have um, any favorite moments either from shooting the movie or moments that were in the movie that, that you love best? Pretty much every single fucking scene I was in is my favorite in that film. That film was so much fun to work on. It was the kind of job where when we were done filming, we all just kind of looked around and we're like, do we have to stop? Can't we just keep doing this? Like, we want to keep doing this. We had so I much fun. You, I've got sequel ideas. I mean, I'm ready. all for it. I mean, it might have to be a prequel if some of us are to be. I've that. got ideas. Okay. Don't okay. Worry. Great. <laughs> but I mean, the directors, the producers, everybody were, was so cool. The writers were great. They, I mean, we, they let us improv and have some fun and come up with like oh. different zingers all the time. And like, we would do takes where we were coming up with buttons and, and different outro lines as our characters would exit every single time. And you were just like trying to make each other laugh the whole time. So any of the group scenes where all of us were together was just, we would be laughing our asses off constantly. It was, it was just, and I think it kind of comes through on screen. I think you can tell that we're having a good time. Oh, totally. Uh, that's like one of the most fun films I've seen in the last few years. Like, Thank you. I, I agree. I, I loved watching it just, and, you know, I saw how the sausage was made. I was there, but like, you know, I, I just loved how that film turned out. And I knew it was going to be like that the second I got the audition. I knew exactly what they were going for. I could feel it. I could read it off the sides and oh, awesome. I was so excited and I wanted that job so badly. I, I like, they didn't even give me the full script. They just gave me a couple scenes, I think two or three scenes to film. I filmed them in my kitchen in LA. And uh, ironically that same night, my, um, I was making a self tape for a Hallmark Christmas movie, which I also <laughs> booked. I booked both those jobs in the same night. So different, these two. <laughs> Like right at both of my alleys. Yeah, Yeah. baby. Yeah, absolutely. And um, but I remember reading those scenes and just being like, I don't need to read the rest of the script. I know this 
script is awesome. I know that this movie is going to be awesome. I know exactly the tone that they're going for. It's like very much in line with like an Evil Dead kind of uh, not quite as campy and goofy, but it has like that same level of gore and comedy in there. And I'm like, I know exactly what they're going for. And my God, do I want this role so badly. And And it just- You knocked it out of the goddamn part. uh, Thank you so much. Thank you. It's, It's one of my favorite roles. Like it was just so much fun. Yeah, I gotta say, um, Pax with the Devil, real or fake? That's one of my favorite moments. <laughs> <laughs> I love all the things that that Fitch Fitch the bitch uh, googles. Yeah, His we call him Fitch the bitch. Gold. Oh yeah, <laughs> Pax with the Devil, real or fake? fake? The writers and the directors from Ready or Not are also the team who did Scream Five, the new yeah, Scream. Ready the Silence. Um, did they like? slip you any spoilers do you are you excited to see it have you talked to them about it like what tell us yeah wait a minute obviously maybe i can get them to send me a screener since the movie's already out maybe i can find like a for your consideration screener somewhere oh they'll send you a screener yeah seriously i remember when they announced it i mean i text with them still all the time and uh um They're just so awesome. Uh, Matt and Tyler and Chad are the three guys behind Radio Silence. And it's kind of Matt and Tyler who do the directing and Chad is like a supervising producer, but Mm -hmm. they all kind of work together and they work so seamlessly. And usually when I see on a project that it's like a couple directors, I'm like, oh boy, this is going to be, this is going to be a lot of arguments and a lot of like cooks in the kitchen. It couldn't have been a more smooth and seamless process. They never fought you know, they knew exactly how to work with each other and they worked so efficiently with each other. And uh, all three of them were such a joy to work with. Um, But no, I got no spoilers from them. Um, James Vanderbilt, who's a producer on Ready or Not, is one of the writers on Scream, along with one of the Ready or Not writers, uh, Guy Busick. And of course, um, um, Kevin Williamson, the original, the creator. Um, But I know um I know Guy and I know James and they're also phenomenal writers and uh I mean James James wrote Zodiac and like he's written some amazing films yeah James Vanderbilt he knows his horror he knows his stuff and Guy is a great writer the whole team everybody is so great uh and you're just simply reminding me that I should just ask them for a fucking you gotta ask them you you could also ask um I don't tend to do that though. I, I mean, I like to go out and support my friends' yeah. movies. I like to buy a well, ticket them. and be an actual, cause I, I love film. Yeah. I'm an actual, yeah. you know, fan but your of pal, movies. And Adam Hardy so was them. also in Scream 4. Don't forget, you've got an additional right. Scream connection. So That's true. I never <laughs> thought of that. Well, you have a great excuse. Like you're trapped in Canada. I mean, that sounds like it's bad. You're having fun, but like you're trapped in Canada and you can't <laughs> go to a theater and you have to see yeah. it. Otherwise, There's other the places in Canada the that have theaters that just are running Venmo right now. Them just Venmo them fourteen dollars. Fourteen dollars sounds so idea. fair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My ticket and be was like, fifteen dollars, so you could give them fifteen just for. There. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And sounds be like, good. Send here's fifteen dollars. Send me uh-huh. a yeah. Cleaner. Split it amongst yeah. yourselves. Yeah. And Treat please, yourself. someone send me Get a, a link. gumball. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's what. That's how much a gumball is in LA. So yeah, that actually mm-hmm. prices out. Yeah, God. perfect. <laughs> kind of true. Yeah, an Air well, One gumball. Oh, oh, that that's way more than fifteen dollars. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, if we don't have any other questions, I'd like to um, transition into our ready or not segments Ooh. and have you do our segments for ready or not. We've already talked on the episode about how it could be gayer, where Matthew Lillard would be, and who's the dumb bitch. But we would love to get your take. Can we start with? How could okay. that movie be gayer? What do you think? Um, I definitely think one of the kids in the family, like one of the rich mm. kids, should have a gay partner. Okay. Um, I think that could definitely be somewhere where it could be gayer. Um, hmm. like one some of sort of a love your affair kids between in the movie when they grow no. up, or like one of the adult no, no, no. Kids. Sorry, I don't. I wasn't okay. clear. One of the adult kids, which, yes. oh, but that yeah. would potentially kick me out of the film. So you know, that is part of the sacrifice. They that could be Polly. They could be Polly. Ooh, that would be so much fun. That Ooh. would have actually Ooh. been a really yeah. Fun. If like Emily and Fitch had like like uh, an assistant or someone that was with them, but they also were just like a thruple basically, and mm-hmm. just like just that mixing would... it all up and get caught having sex in a closet somewhere. 
for that sure. They sneak away. That's yeah. so scans. That really um, works. Yeah. Or the father played by Henry Cherney, like if instead of him always chasing after the maids, if he was like in love with the male butler and they were having an affair on the side, I think that would be a great place to put that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. okay. Who's the dumb bitch? Who do you think is the dumb bitch? Fitch. Oh, wait. Fitch I, is the sorry. dumb bitch. Fitch the Fitch bitch the is the dumb bitch. A hundred percent. I am the dumb bitch. Proudly. Proudly the dumb bitch. But you're like um, engineering. You're using your phone to figure out what you can do. To, you I know. have to Google shit because I don't know how to do anything. <laughs> like I'm the dumbest like, bitch. Know, I'm just like, uh. you know that everybody who works in IT just goes and Googles the problem. People don't know how to do things. They always just go to the expert sources you That's know, to point. know that what you don't know. Tutorials. Yeah. Wise. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. That's, it's, I it's, still think I'm the dumbest but, bitch. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, he's not prepared. He, he doesn't know what to do yeah. with that crossbow. Right. Exactly. <laughs> okay, okay. And then circling back, where would Matthew Lillard fit into this film? I mean, do you go like full on character actor Matthew Lillard or do you go sort of like straight man Matthew Lillard? Because, um, you know, you could put him... If you want to work on is one thing that I love about Adam Brody is you expect him to be this like wildly comedic character. And he's actually so um, serious and so grounded yeah. and raw and real. He's able to be funny and sardonic, but he is so much, uh, he's just so good. Like I love him in that film and, mm. and it, it works so well on screen, even against all these like really goofy weirdo characters. Um, uh, so I wouldn't want to touch his performance, but I could also see Matthew Lillard playing that role, being the brother, or mm-hmm. actually the the groom would be great too. Yeah. Um, he would be fun to see. I mean, you could see him in so many things. Make him the Fitch character, make him like a real character actor, make him like the butler who like keeps getting injured, but like is always chasing after the bride. I mean, I think that would be really oh, fun yeah. as well. It's hard to place Matthew him. He could Lillard do so many roles. Butler. I think that'd be fun. I think that'd be great because the butler gets like beat up all the time, but he's like strange and playing the piano and singing opera and and like, but like also kind of evil and like, like, you know, driving. And he's not even part of the pact with the devil. And yet he's agreed to be complicit in all of this. So that's a very interesting character choice. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going with the butler. I'm going with the butler on this. Final answer, the butler. Yeah, final answer. Gorgeous. Perfect. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us for our little q and It's been so much fun to chat with you in these few moments. And it was so much fun to have you on the pod. Um, and so everyone should go check that out if you guys haven't listened yet. Mm-hmm. Um, you should go follow Christian on Instagram if you want to plug your Instagram, Christian. Sure, my Instagram and my Twitter is at Mr. Christian Broom. Um, <laughs> I just okay. chose Mr. because there's another You're formal. Christian You're a formal Brune. guy. <laughs> I'm not even that formal. There's a Christian Brune in Denmark who's got the, the handle. It's the exact same spelling. He grabbed and it first. He grabbed it first. So he earns it and he gets a lot of like random messages from people thinking it's me. So I feel sorry for him. <laughs> not but, us though. We found yeah. our way into the right the right DMs. Um yes, but you yeah, did. so so go Christian follow Brune. Christian on social, bug him like we did. Please um do. and watch Snowpiercer season three um comes out Monday, January 24th. Mm-hmm. Thanks Christian. Thanks for having me. Spooky Tuesday. Mm-hmm.